Hi everyone, Kip Pace here with I'd Bailey Technology Consulting. Today I'm going to show you how to create a custom field and a custom list on a transaction in NetSuite. So the scenario I'm going to present to you and the problem we're going to try and solve is that there has been a large amount of returns for Gill Company here. Uh, they've had a lot of customers returning product and management isn't quite sure why. So they'd like us to figure out a way how we could better track and provide reasons as to what customer returns are. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom field with a custom list assigned to that field. So when customer support agents are entering returns in the system, management can now better report what the reasons are as to why customers are returning their product. So there's a few different ways that we can navigate to this. Uh, first I'm going to show you if you go to customization, lists, records, and fields, here is where you can create a custom list. A custom list is a selection of uh, specified reasons or s a drop down of things that you can select within a custom field. And then down here we have a couple different types of custom fields we can create. We have transaction body fields and transaction column fields. And right now I'm going to show you what the difference is between those. Uh, and to do that I'm going to show you what a current RMA looks like within this environment. So we're going to go to customers and we're going to issue a return authorization. So this is the screen that a customer service rep would go to if they wanted to issue an RMA for a customer, right? And up here you can see all of the standard fields, PO, date, customer, those types of things, right? And these are considered transaction body fields. And then down here you have your specific item, quantity, units, amount. These are considered your transaction column fields. And we're actually going to be creating a transaction column field. That way a customer service agent can return multiple items and each item can have its own return reason as to why a customer might be returning that product. So there's a, uh, as I mentioned you can go to customization lists uh, or transaction column fields to create those or if you're already on a transaction like this you can hover over customize and you can either customize the form you can create a new body field, which we do not want to do, but we do want to create a new column field. So I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to click on create a new column field. It's going to take me right to the page that I want to get to to create that field. So I'm going to call this return reason. And then I'm going to create a custom ID for it just in case I end up wanting to do some scripting or some workflows on this field at a later time. Here's the description to help a user understand what the purpose of the field is. Um, this type is the type of record that you want to create. So you can make it freeform text, you can make it a hyperlink, you could do a checkbox, you could do a date, but for our purposes we're going to do a, a list slash record. And then here in your list record drop down, you're going to have all of your standard types of records like employees or any other types of custom lists that you've already created. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to create our own list. So to do that, we could either go customization, list records and fields and lists, or we could select this plus sign right here and it will allow us to create a custom list right now while we're creating our, our uh, column field. So I'm going to call this return reason codes and then again give it a custom ID and then right here these are the different values or the different options that are going to show up in the drop down box for the customer service reps so we're going to enter things like wrong size or damaged product or wrong color, things like that, right? So we'll go ahead and roll with those three. We're going to hit save. So as soon as I save that, you can see here my return reason codes show up as a new list that I can use to select within my transaction. Here, this store value, this automatically is checked by default. This means, do you want that selection to be stored on that transaction or just selected one time and then not stored for future use. 
uh, obviously we want that if we want to run some reports, so we're going to leave that checked. Down here in our applies to, this tells uh, uh, this gives us the option of what types of transaction this new custom field is going to apply to, and I'm going to go ahead and select sale item. Here in display, this helps you determine how you want your pr uh, new custom field to be displayed. I'm going to go ahead and leave everything as normal. If you do disabled, that means it's going to show up, but it's going to be grayed out and nobody can change it. And if you do hidden, it's, that means it's going to be stored on your transaction, but you can't see it while you're entering a transaction, but you can report on it later. Obviously, we want our reps to be able to change it, so we're going to leave that as normal. Here in our validation and defaulting, I'm going to go ahead and make this mandatory. That way, anytime any rep is entering an RMA, they are going to be required to select a return reason so we have consistency across the board. And then you can also select different defaults, uh, but we're going to go ahead and leave everything the way it is there. And then sourcing and filtering. So here you can select different criteria to source different information into your field if you'd like, or down here you can set different criterion to make your selections filtered based off of other uh, fields within your, within your transaction or because of, you know, user department or user subsidiary, you know, things, things like that to be able to filter what is possible to be selected within your custom field. None of those apply to us because we created our own custom list, so we're not going to change anything here. And then access allows you to change the different type of access levels or who is able to even access or see your field that you've created. Um, we're going to go ahead and leave everything as edit, and you can filter this. Uh, you can change access by role, by department, or by subsidiary. We're going to go ahead and leave this as is, and I'm going to go ahead and save this new custom transaction column field. So now you will see that it shows up here on our list right here, return reason. And the last thing I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and apply this to the specific forms that I want this uh, new custom field to show up on. Um, by default, it's going to go ahead and select a bunch of different things because I told it it was a sale item. I'm going to go ahead and unmark this. I'm going to find my RMAs and say I want this to show up on my primary return authorization credit form because that's my default form for RMAs. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So now when I go to transactions, customers, issue return authorizations. You can see my new field now shows up down here as a column under my item fields, and it's a drop down with the specific custom list that we created. Now the last thing that I want to do is I don't like that it's all the way over here on the very, very right. I'd like to move it over a little bit so it's a little easier to access, especially since it's a required field. I want to make sure that it's as easy to see and access as possible to make the user experience as easy as possible for my service reps. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Customize, and I'm going to customize this form. What that's going to do is it's going to take me to the menu where I can customize that specific form for RMAs that I've been looking at. I'm going to go to Screen Fields here, and then I'm going to scroll to the right, and I'm going to select Columns right here. These are the different columns within the uh, item selection. And now if I scroll down here to the bottom, you'll see this is our custom field that we just created. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this, and I'm going to drag it up. And I'm going to place it right here behind a mount. That way, as soon as, as a rep is entering a line for a specific product that's being returned and the amount of, of the return, they can also enter the reason right behind it. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to go back and look at my form to validate that everything looks the way I hope it does. And here you can see now our new custom field shows up right here behind the mount as we anticipated. And now we can start reporting on RMAs and why customers are returning our products. And that's how you create custom fields and custom lists within NetSuite. As always, if you have any questions, our team is here to help. Please click the link below to get in touch.